Hello and welcome to MUTV's Tailgaters. My name is JJ Angelo. This is Shane Palma, and it is so good to be here. It has been a long, long while since we've last had one of these shows. Over six months, I believe. And I know what you're thinking. No, I did not change my name legally, and neither <laughs> did he. This used to be Bradley Davis's spot and Marcus's Thomas spot, the former hosts of this show. We want to thank them for the great job yes. that we did, thank and you. we hope to continue their legacy here and now. So let's get into it. Shane, what do we have planned for today's show? Well, JJ, we're doing an NFL spectacular, basically. The NFL comes back this Thursday night. We're going to break down game one, Chiefs versus Texans, a rematch from the last year's playoffs. Then we're going to talk some fancy football. We're going to send it to a special laboratory segment that we're going to get to a little bit later, and then some hot takes. MVP, okay. most scored touchdowns this year, and some flops and surprises. We've got it all on today's show. I'm really looking forward to it. So, first things first, first yes. game of the season. This Thursday, we got Chiefs, Texans, rematch from last year's AFC Divisional game. Shane, what are the keys to the games for the Kansas City Chiefs? As we saw last year in the playoffs, the Chiefs did not get off to a great start. The Texans, I think, were up three touchdowns at one point. Yep. Chiefs ultimately scored over 50 points. They won that game. Chiefs have to score early. You got to keep Patrick Mahomes on the field. You got to keep that offense moving. And you got to make sure that that ball gets in either Travis Kelsey's, Tyreek Hill, or Clyde Edwards Hilaire, my favorite rookie out of this class. They have to have the ball in their hands. Okay. Yeah. Second point. We want to do the second point right now. Yeah, second go for point. It. I said Clyde Edwards Hilaire before. You got to open up holes for him. I know they had a few guys in the offensive line that they lost this past offseason. Now you got to make sure that the LSU product is getting the holes that he needs to score touchdowns. Can't rely solely on Mahomes' arm this year. you got to be able to run the rock. Kareem Hunt did it a few years ago for them, and he was a league-leading rusher. If they can do that for Alaire this year, he is set up for a great spot. All right. And finally, we're going to take it to the defensive side of things as the last key to the game. Let's do it. we got to limit Will Fuller. Big burner. He's healthy now. He's coming into the season primed as the number one target for Deshaun Watson. And you have Brandon Cooks, two speedsters yeah. on the outside. These guys can change a game with one play, with one catch, they got to make sure without Prashad Breeland there in the, as a cornerback after he got suspended, you, you got to make sure that you limit these two guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Those guys are big, and those are actually a couple of my keys to the Texans game. If the Texans want to win, they got to do three things. And the first thing is, yes, they have to take advantage of Prashad Breeland's absence. He's suspended four games. The secondary is a little bit iffy for the Chiefs. Still got Tyron Matthew. They do, a key they do piece have him. On that He's team. big. But outside of him, he can't cover two guys. No. It's going to be tough. They've got to try and take advantage of that. Secondly, uh, also on the offensive side, and uh, one thing that the Chiefs definitely have beat, even with a rookie, is the run game. I'm not super high on David Johnson. I think he's very much struggled with injuries, struggled to get back into form. It's, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. If the Chiefs or if the Texans can't get the run game going early, they can't get hung up on that. They gotta stick to their their offensive, their wide receiver weapons. And thirdly, and also staying on the offensive side, they have to just prepare to play for the shootout because that's probably what this game is gonna end up being. The back and forth, they might go down two scores. They can't let that get to them. They're gonna have to keep replaying going back at it with their offense. Just have confidence in Deshaun Watson. He's a great player, and if they want to have a chance, it's going to be on his shoulders. Listen, Mahomes wasn't the greatest quarterback last year, as he was the year before that. But who's to say this is a new season, a new year, a different season. Yeah. There's not going to be hardly any Chiefs fans this year. I think it's, what, 10 to 12% capacity? Something, Something like less than yeah. 25% fans this year, so not going to have that home field advantage, per se, that they would usually have in Arrowhead Stadium, one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. Yeah. I still think this game's going to be a shootout. I think these two teams are going to trade blows the entire time. I have the Chiefs winning this one, but by a score of 36 to 30. Okay, yeah, I agree. The shootout is pretty apparent, I think. I'd be really surprised. I do think your point with the home field advantage could play a big factor. Maybe it's going to be a bit more defensive than we think. But I think the Chiefs are going to put up a lot of points regardless. I got the Chiefs 44, Texans 28. Who's your key player this game? Who's the X factor that if either team's going to come out of this one on top, this is why they're going to do it? I think it's got to be Will Fuller. He's got to prove that he can first stay healthy, even in the first game of the, first game of the season, and he's got to prove that he can get back to his route running, speedster ways, 
as soon as as soon as possible if they want to beat the Chiefs. But I'm going to stick with Clyde edwards helaire here. I think if he gets the ball at least 15 touches this game, he's a difference maker, and he's going to be the reason why the Chiefs walk out of this one victorious. Yeah. We're going to move on now. We have a fun new segment, the Fantasy Football Laboratory, starring Lucas Parrish and Jack McGrath. We're going to throw it to them in the lab right now and hear what they have to say about their favorite and least favorite fantasy plays for week one. All right. Thank you, JJ and Shane. So we're with the Fantasy Football Laboratory. It's our fantasy football podcast. Started it up a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and, and we fit the ground running. We're ready to talk some fantasy football. Let's so do it. I am Jack on the show. We call me the chemist because I always have the winning formula. <laughs> and I'm Jack McGrath, and this is Lucas Spitfire Parrish. Yes, sir, Spitfire, because you know I'm always spitting those hot takes. <laughs> so we're going to break down a little bit fantasy football week one NFL season. It starts this week. So our first thing we're going to go through is our start of the week. Who's a player that might be hovering outside the top 30, top 40 at their position who we think should be in your starting lineup? Yep. I'll start off. I'll go Will Fuller. So Will Fuller is now basically yep. the number one receiver in Houston. He's going up against the Chiefs defense in what's supposed to be a very high-scoring game. Two yeah, high-scoring offenses. It should be. I really expect it to. The Chiefs back there, especially without Bashad Breeland, they've got nothing back there at cornerback. Exactly. So Will Fuller is... Going to turn on the Jets. I could see him getting a touchdown, a couple of lawn bombs, and, and then you're going to have Will Fuller breaking out and having a huge game today. Yeah, no, I, I don't hate that take at all, Jack. Um, Will Fuller, I like for the, I, I don't love for the season just because of injury yep. issues. I think that Brandon Cooks yep. will eventually be that top guy. But Will Agreed. Fuller, when he has been on the field, has been productive because he's a very talented receiver. Will Fuller being healthy, being on that field, having that chemistry with Deshaun Watson, I think Will Fuller could have a big game if he stays healthy. 100%. So who do you have, Lucas? So my start of the week comes from a different team on, obviously, a different team you'd expect. DK Metcalf oh. is my start of the week. And the reason I say this, I expect DK Metcalf this year to leapfrog Tyler Lockett as that top guy on that team, as Russell Wilson's top target. I think it starts this week. Right off the back, week one, DK was very good last year. He's more of a traditional wide receiver one than Tyler Lockett is. DK Metcalf going up against the Atlanta Falcons. On that back end, that cornerback, like we talked about with the Chiefs, the Atlanta Falcons are pretty weak as well. They're starting their rookie out of Clemson, Terrell um, Owens. Terrell, gosh, I can't remember his last name. But the rookie out of Clemson who they're starting. And on the other side, they're starting Isaiah Oliver, who hasn't had much experience in the league as well. I don't think they're going to have anything going on in that back end. I think DK Metcalf is going to run all over this team. All right, now let's talk about our busts of the week. So these aren't yeah. necessarily guys that you're not going to start, because my guy, I think you put him in your starting yeah, lineup. You have to put my guy in your starting what. lineup, too. But these are guys who maybe are projected top 5, top 10, who might not crack the top 20, top 15 this week. So yeah. I'll start off again. My guy this week... DeAndre Hopkins going up against the 49ers defense. Kyler Murray is throwing it to him for the first time. They had no preseason to work out the kinks. And, and suddenly DeAndre Hopkins has to face Richard Sherman in his first game, one of the best corners in football. For that reason, I don't think DeAndre Hopkins gives you top 10 value this week. I think he's more of a 15 to 20 guy. You're still putting DeAndre Hopkins in your starting lineup in fantasy football. But for that reason, I'm not sold on DeAndre Hopkins this week. You know, Jack, those are some good points, but I got to disagree with you. DeAndre Hopkins is my number three ranked wide receiver for this entire fantasy football season. I think he's on an Arizona Cardinals offense that I expect to be great. I expect Kyler Murray to compete for the MVP, be right in that conversation. I think DeAndre Hopkins and him are going to start off strong. DeAndre Hopkins just signed a new contract, right? He's, wanna get one, he's going to want to get out there. I expect some regression from that 49ers secondary. I don't think Richard Sherman is going to be anything like he was last year. Last year, he was insane. He's, he's up there at age. He, he's getting old. I think Richard Sherman is, is going to be a lot worse this year, and I think it'll start week one. I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to eat against that 49ers secondary. My bust of the week, though, comes from that same team. I've got Kenyon Drake, the running back for the Cardinals, as a bust. And I say this because that front line for the 49ers is still packed with studs. They've got Nick Bosa up there. They've got a lot of D Ford is still there. They've got those guys in the middle who just stuffed the run all of last year. Kenyon Drake, I think, is going to be really, again, a guy you're going to want to start still, just a guy that I think may finish more like 15, more like 20, and less like 
five or ten like you drafted him. It's kind of interesting that you say, oh, the Cardinals' offense is so good. It and is. then to take, your, take your busted well, leap from the Cardinals' okay, offense. But I their understand. passing offense okay. is going to be it is going to be excellent. I just think they're going to, against that secondary, which I expect to regress, I just think that run defense is still going to be very good. I think Kenyon Drake is going to really struggle, especially without a very good offensive line there. I think Kenyon Drake is going to struggle to find some room to run. All right, so that's going to do it for us here on our little Fantasy Football Laboratory segment. You can find our podcast anywhere you can find podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yep. Anchor. Um, you can find us everywhere. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter, at FF Laboratory. We've got some quality content there, and that's a good place to check out our podcast as well. So this was good. This is yeah. good. Some good fantasy yeah. talk. So we'll send it back to JJ and Shane. Thanks, guys. Huge thank you to Jack and Lucas there, the chemists and Spitfire themselves. I don't agree with all of their takes there, but I'll give them some passes. They, they know what they're talking about. Oh, yeah, for sure. So let's move in to our last phase, probably the phase that we're most excited about for this show, and that is hot takes, bull predictions, whatever you may have. We're going to set these tables on fire is what JJ is trying to say. Basically, with these, with I'm these being modest, but, yeah, this is going to be <laughs> – some very very hot takes. If you're uh, if you're if we're talking Buffalo Wild Wings, it's the last one on the list. So let's hop into it. Shane, you got some really hot picks, but you are known to hit on these picks yes. here here and there. So let's hear what your first one is. I'm gonna start with my NFL MVP for the season. It's a little early, obviously, to predict anything like this, but I'm going to say Dak Prescott is your MVP for the 2020 season. Hear me out. Okay. I know it's, it may be – in fantasy last year, he was great. On the field, he also played great. Cowboys didn't have the best record in the league, not even close to that. But I think they're taking a step in the right direction. He adds CeeDee Lamb on offense. Now you have three viable wide receiving options in Amari Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup, who I think is going to be fantastic this year. You also have the emergence of tight end Blake Jarwin. You still have Ezekiel Elliott on that offense to throw the ball to or to run that rock. Now, Dak Prescott did not get the contract that he wanted this past year. He wanted to be the highest paid quarterback in the league. Obviously, that went to Patrick Mahomes. And now he's playing on a one-year deal that Jerry Jones basically is going out and saying, prove it. Mm -hmm. And I think that Dak Prescott, Prescott is going to do just that. I have him throwing 40 touchdowns this year. I think he's going to run five in by himself. 5,000 passing yards is not out of the question when you have this many weapons. And listen, Jerry Jones wants to succeed. He wants to see his players succeed. He'd be happy to be proven wrong if Dak Prescott goes out and wins the MVP this year. Yeah, I like that. I think, yeah, that's a very well-reasoned choice. And normally I would disagree, but we are doing hot takes. And, and I called Joe Burrow last year for Heisman he on basically Joe this Burrow. exact same show. So I'm going with another quarterback to win a trophy this year. And I like it. I like I it I want to hear yours, though. Yeah, the only reason I'm not laughing Shane out of the building is because probably my take is twice as hot. And please keep in mind the word hot take here. I have for NFL MVP Carson Wentz. Oh, my God. Keeping it in the NFC East. I know it sounds crazy, but this is a guy who was just two years prior right there in the MVP conversation. He may not put up the same numbers that we see with Dak or uh, Patrick Mahomes, but I think he's got that factor that he can just flat out win. He can get the job done. I think he's going to lead the Eagles to 13 wins. Wow. I think he has the surprise factor at his advantage because he's been iffy here and there, but I think he's going to um, pick it up. He's going to really prove himself. I like uh, the addition of Jalen Rager, Alshon Jeffrey, they have a solid O-line with Jason Peters and Lane Johnson, and also Miles Sanders. He's huge. He's going to play a big factor this year with his own uh, touchdowns, and he's going to help Carson Wentz get those up. Pass-catching RBs are the future of the NFL. I think he has a breakout year, helps Carson Wentz with his touchdown, um, touchdown numbers, which is huge in the MVP conversation, of course, and I think Carson Wentz is going to do just enough to put himself in that conversation, and he may just take it home. Could he get in the conversation? Maybe. Maybe he could put his name there among a Kyler Murray or a Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jack Prescott this year. But you got to realize, this guy can't stay on the field. Yes, he has those receiving options. He also has Zach Ertz and Dallas Scott are two amazing tight ends in the league. And Boston Scott is also a great receiving back. But you're talking about a guy who's missed how many games in the past since his rookie season? He couldn't even play in his own Super Bowl that he led his team to. Nick Foles had to win that game for him. 
I can't see Carson Wentz staying on the field enough games to even be considered the MVP this season. I, I, I have to disagree with that because you have to keep in mind the MVP is a regular season award. Carson Wentz, yes, he's missed time, but he's played two full NFL seasons. His, the year he had the MVP campaign, he played 13 games. The only other season he missed, he played 11 games. Yes, he's missed playoff, plenty of playoff games, but he has been there for the regular season. And I think if he plays a full season, he's going to be right there. Listen, 13 wins is a little much. I mean, we'll get to my other bold okay, take later, okay. but... I don't know. Uh, that one I might I might be a little spectacle on, but I, I'm willing to I'm willing to wait and see with that. Sure, sure. Well, before we get too heated, let's just move <laughs> on. What's your pick for Super Bowl winner? Super Bowl winner. Now, it's easy to go and say the Chiefs. Yeah. You you could say the Chiefs are going to repeat. They hardly lost anyone. They gain Clyde edwards helaire and I'm going to be boring, and I'm going to say the Chiefs. Okay. It's an easy pick. It's, okay. It's a pick that obviously people are going to be like, that's not hot, that's not bold. But you have a Super Bowl yeah. a Super Bowl team losing hardly any players. Going back-to-back should not be that difficult. Yeah. I, I honestly, in all aspects of your argument, I really agree with that. And just but for the sake of differentiating myself, I'm just thinking which NFC team has the best chance of winning a shootout against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. And I think it has to be the Saints. With Drew Brees' arm, I know he's an aging quarterback, but he's still proven he can put up touchdown numbers. And they added Emmanuel Sanders. They they're did only add getting Emmanuel better Sanders. on offense. Yeah, they're only getting better on offense. Their defense is middle of the pack for O-line and linebackers. I think it's underrated for secondary. They have Marshawn Lattimore as well as Janoris Jenkins playing in the secondary. Yes, they did add him. And I think that... In the same sense that Dak Prescott is having to prove it, I think this is kind of a make-or-break year as well for Drew Brees and Sean Payton, having to prove that they can finally put it all together, and I really think that they can. I really think they can go on a good run, make the games count that when they have to in January, and then see themselves in that final game in February, and they might just take it home. Listen, you're talking about a shootout potential team. You, as we're getting into the next part of the hot takes here, don't have anyone on the Saints as the most – uh, highest scoring touchdown leaders in the league, but you have someone else that basically did it last season. Yeah, that is Lamar Jackson. Yes. He was the leading. The That's a boring leader. take, too. Yeah, to I know, out. I know. We're just going back and forth here. <laughs> but he was the league leader in touchdowns last year, and I think he's only going to do it again. He's only getting more comfortable with his receiving core after a year where he was the biggest speculation two years ago was can he pass? Mm-hmm. He proved us wrong last year. He's getting more comfortable with a good receiving core. Rookie like rookies last year, like Miles Boykin, I think is going to take a step up this year. He's going to throw more, and he's just going to do the same thing that he needs to with his legs. Maybe not as so many long runs, but he's going to punch it in when they get close. When they're in that red zone, I would expect eight to ten touchdowns rushing. Do you think he's end. limited at all in terms of rushing this season, knowing how the coaching staff might want to protect him? They know he can throw the ball downfield now. He doesn't have to risk it with those big plays. You've seen quarterbacks, the more that they run, the more injury risk they face. Do you think he's limited at all in that sense, or do you think they're just going to let him go again? Definitely. I don't think he's going to rush for 1,000 yards again. Probably not for the rest of his career. Maybe one year, maybe another, but probably not this year. They're definitely going to want to protect him. They know they have a star. He's the MVP. They're going to do all they can to protect him. I think his run game, like I said, is going to be utilized well in the red zone, but we're not going to see designed runs from the 30-yard line on the other end of the field. It's going to be limited, but I think he just because he is more comfortable with throwing now, it's still going to be the same output. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to do a, a bit more spicy of Go a for take for, for leading touchdowns, but it won't be for quarterbacks. I'm not going to count quarterbacks here. We can count quarterbacks for yours. Sure. I'm talking purely skill positional players. Last year we saw Aaron Jones, Green Bay Packers running back, mm-hmm. lead the league with 17 rushing touchdowns, or 17 total. This year it's going to be a name that I've said multiple times on the show, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. In terms of fantasy, I mean, I have him in almost every league that I've done. I believe in this guy. I believe in the Andy Reid system and and the Chiefs offense. You have a guy who at LSU dominated their run game, versatile, on and off the field. He was catching balls. He was running them in for touchdowns. He played with Joe Burrow last year, and now he gets Patrick Mahomes. I can see him easily doing 15-plus touchdowns whether that includes rushing or receiving this season. So what do you think is more, rushing or receiving? Because the Chiefs definitely, do definitely love rushing. their pass running. I definitely think okay. that he's going to have more rushing than receiving touchdowns this yeah. year. I don't doubt that Patrick Mahomes could have 35-plus touchdown passes. 
10 of those could go to a guy like Travis Kelsey, maybe spread them out, seven to Tyreek Hill, and you have the emerging McCole Hardman there. But you just you have to focus in on the run game for the Chiefs, and I think Clyde Edwards Slayer is the guy to do it this year. Okay. I like that pick. Now, let's go final part. Yes. Biggest surprise, biggest flop. I guess I'll start it off. Start it off. Biggest, biggest flop, and there's probably going to be a lot of kickback on this one because I think we're looking at a team that wasn't great last year, so it's hard to say they're going to flop again serviceable. this year. Serviceable. They were serviceable. They were a seven-win team, yes. keep in mind. But that is the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think, based solely on the hype that they're getting. A I'm lot putting of them as a flop because of – an aging Tom Brady and a Gronkowski that's been out of the league for over a year and before that could not stay healthy. Um, Brady, you just got to look at the last two games that Brady played last year. I know he has that clutch factor, but that did not show up in their wild card game. He was pretty putrid in that game. And the must win game to get that divisional or the first round bye against the Dolphins, they couldn't surmise anything. And I just think that he's going to be frustrated with a new system, a new coach for the first time in his life, really. He is getting an upgrade with weapons. And I do think that, yeah, they'll definitely put out more wins than they did last year. And in a shaky AFC or an NFC South, they'll probably find their way into a playoff game. I don't see them passing the wild card round. And therefore, they're going to flop based on the predictions of just – great magnitude that have come out before this season listen they added a ton of weapons on offense you bring in tom brady i don't think tom brady's going there to lose i really don't yeah. if he had nothing left in the tank he would have retired already called it quits but he joins that team and he calls in his buddy rob gronkowski a guy who came out of retirement just to play with brady because he believes that these guys can go out and win a super bowl you have chris godwin you have mike evans oj howard's there as well Ronald Jones at running back, along with Leonard Fournette. Defense may be a little shaky. You don't see them punching out at least nine wins this season, or do you think that's probable? I think I think nine, no more than ten. Okay. And I don't see them going past the wild card round. That's what I'm sticking with. For the biggest shocker in terms of wins, you don't think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to win a lot of games. And you said that the Eagles were going to win 13 games this season. 13. I'm going to hold you to that. Okay, hold me And to you can it. hold me to this one. I will. I think that the Dallas Cowboys – led by MVP winner Dak <laughs> Prescott, are going to win 14 games this season. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. That's Chiefs-Ravens caliber, and oh, I yeah. didn't pick the Cowboys as my Super Bowl pick. I do think that they'll go up against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl this year. However, I just feel like this offense is really taking that next step forward, and sure. I think that they have a great defense behind Leighton Van Anderush. Yeah. If that's even how you say his name. I, I love him. Close enough. Close enough. They have Sean Lee still. <laughs> they have a lot of great defensive yeah. backs on that team. Defensive line still has Demarcus Lawrence. I think this team is primed to have a huge season. Jerry Jones is going to pay a lot of players this year. Okay. Yeah. I think. Is that yeah. too hot? 14 I don't wins? Know. That's I a don't lot know. of wins. That's a lot of wins. Now that I think about it, that's too so off. So is 13 from, a perfect from season. an Eagles season. 13, you come up, you come, I think 13 is more common. 14 is just that, that it's, it's next the extra, step. It's the that extra, extra step, step that makes that team that much more lethal in the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's two off from a perfect season <laughs> for the Dallas Cowboys. But, yeah, that's what we're all about here. At Hot takes. Tailgaters. But and we're going to make these right. Yeah, we're going to make sure they come true. We're manifesting it now. Listen, I'll go out and play for the Dallas Cowboys if I'm going to prove I'll, that they're going to win 14 games That's why we got these jerseys on. Yes. We're ready to go. <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much for joining thank us you, for yes. our first show of the year. It's been an absolute blast and a journey to come back here, and we're hoping to provide great content for you guys for the rest of the year. Now, for J.J. Angelo and Shane Palma, we are signing off with Tailgaters. Thank you very much for joining